Lake Victoria is the world's second largest lake by surface area. It is one of Africa's great lakes, like Malawi and Tanganyika. Together with a few smaller lakes, a quarter of the world's fresh water is found here. Victoria is very different than many of these lakes as it is not part of the Rift Valley. Both Malawi and Tanganyika are very deep and made by large cracks in the African continent. Victoria is a flooded basin and far shallower. The lake is fed by several rivers and drained by the White Nile through Lake Koyoga. It borders Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. Like other East African lakes, Victoria is inhabited by cichlids. Cichlids are fish distributed around the world. The Great Lakes of Africa are home to a great variety of species. Lake Victoria was home to 500 species alone. The far smaller Lake Koyoga has 47 species. Almost all of the Lake Victorian cichlids are haplochromians, which also includes most of the species in Lake Malawi and many others across the Great Lakes. Although all the fish in Lake Victoria are extremely similar, they fill out many different ecological niches. 40% of the fish in the lake feed on detritus, eating rotting material, such as the Christmas fulu. Other species, like the thick-skinned haplochromus or Lake Koyoga's zebra liquidans, are insectivores. Pundamillion naira eats both aquatic insects and plankton. Its relative Pundamillia macrocephala feeds primarily on freshwater sponges along with some algae and insects. There are many other niches including predatory fish and full vegetarians that eat algae and plants. Lake Victoria has played a large part in human history as it is one of the primary sources of the Nile. The lake was not discovered until Arabians began exploring deep into the African continent. These Arabian traders already attributed as a source of the Nile by 1160. It took Europeans until 1858 to first see the lake. Despite the lake having a rich variety of small cichlids, there was, there was not much in the way of large fish to sustain a large fishery that colonial governments wanted. There were a few large tilapia and catfish native to the lake. This really sustained local communities. These communities also ate some of the haplochromines, but the Europeans wanted something bigger. In the 1920s, it was first proposed to introduce the large Nile perch to the lake. These fish could take the native trash fish and begin a massive fishery on the lake. There is plenty of opposition to doing this, though. The first fish brought to the lake were non-native tilapia in the 50s. They did plenty of damage to the native fish and the ecosystem itself, but that was nothing compared to what came next. In 1954, Nile perch were finally introduced by local officials in Uganda. These fish spread into Lake Koyoga, but did not reach Victoria. The fish was officially introduced into Lake Victoria in 1962 and 63. The perch spread clockwise around the lake, triggering an extinction event in the lake. Around 200 of the original 500 species went extinct. The hardest hit fish were the native piscivores and detritivores. Without the detritivores to eat rotting material, the lake began to develop dead zones, forcing all fish life into shallower parts of the lake. The peak of the Nile perch population was in the 1980s, which is also when the first major exportation of the Lake Victoria's cichlids occurred and fish found their way into people's aquariums. Many species, like zebra liquidins, are in fact critically endangered. Incredibly, some fish have done better, including Pundamillion naira, which are rather common. In the 1990s, Nile perch populations began to decline. At the same time, another invader showed up, the water hyacinth. This floating tropical plant quickly choked up lots of the shoreline in the 90s. It also formed more dead zones and many shallower habitats. They however had some good effects, and a few species thought to have been lost were rediscovered in areas isolated by the water hyacinth. Water hyacinth though began disappearing in the 2000s. The story of Lake Victoria is a mess. Although the number of invasive species are down, the, the future of the lake is still uncertain. Many cichlids are very different than they were before the invaders. Different habits and habitats and even larger gills and bigger eyes are in response to the changed lake. If you enjoyed the story of Lake Victoria, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and check out my video on an invasion of tropical fish in Grand Teton National Park.